Hey guys, it's Kev here, and I want to just do kind of a recap on Blade Show. Um, I just got back last night. Uh, we decided to skip Sunday. It was only till 2 p.m., and we had kind of hit everything we wanted to hit over the weekend, uh, so over Friday and Saturday. And um, I had a 13-hour drive back to PA, so I figured I'd jump on it. So Kyle and I grabbed a, a bite to eat, uh, packed up said our uh, sad goodbyes and then we um hit the road and uh 13 hours later i got home at uh three in the morning and uh went right to bed next to my wife which was fantastic got to see my daughter in the morning and um that was really really nice um so i'm a little spent slept till like 11 got up uh, been unpacking and uh showered and uh working on some stuff so uh pardon me if i'm a little all over the place uh, so I just kind of want to start off with my experience and then kind of uh, get into some of the knives I got uh, either for myself or someone else. So um, it was absolutely a blast. I'm so glad I did it this year. I'm so glad that uh, I got to finally meet Kyle in person. Um, it was absolutely uh, the best decision I made um, I went there more for the people than I did for the knives, and that's kind of how it turned out. Um, I did get some cool stuff, but it wasn't anything like revolutionary. Um, you know, there wasn't a ton of like new stuff or exclusive stuff that we haven't talked about on live streams or you you haven't seen on other channels. So, um, you know, if you plan to go to a Blade Show in the future, don't really expect that. Um, unless you're kind of like a passing hobbyist you know then you're gonna go there and see all types of stuff right but if you're like us where you're always got your finger on the pulse of the hobby you're not going to be surprised um but you're going to get to meet cool people and and first off I, I got to meet kyle that was absolutely fantastic we spent the weekend together uh no we didn't share a bed uh we had our own queen size bed but i had to sleep on the other side of the room from him and uh actually wasn't bad i thought he'd be a snoring monster but he's not he's quiet i probably snored um and luckily he's like me we're both kind of polar bears we need that uh you know 60 degree room to sleep uh so that worked out and i am sweating my balls off right now in my room here uh the ac keeps going out i have a fuse going out i got something going on i gotta fix um so Anyway, uh, we went to the show and um, we met so many people. We ran into Casey from Knives Fast. Great dude. Uh, we walked around with him a little bit. That was fun. He introduced me to uh, Jake Hoback and I got to uh, pick up a knife there. I'll show you. Um, we ran into Justin, the knife dude. Uh, this kid is 14. He's on YouTube. He runs a pass around group. Um, I'm pretty impressed with him, and uh, he was cool. Uh, we hung out with him quite a bit, actually. Uh, and his mom was there. Um, she did a great job uh, being a silent kind of mom, going off and doing her own thing. But she was also really cool. Um, and she bought me a beer, which was awesome. Um, and then, oh my god, we ran into so many people. We saw Stasa23, Nick, ran into him. Um, if I miss anybody, uh, you know, I just, off the top of my head, I'm not thinking straight. Ran into Carlos from DCS, and um, oh, I can't remember his name, but he's from Outer Limitless. Uh, he's a cool dude. Um, and uh, we saw some random people, other YouTubers like Taylor Martin and uh, Bird and uh, Frankie. Um, and then for makers, man, uh, Jake Hoback, Andrew Demko, John Demko, um, you know, we talked to Ramon Chavez for a bit, uh, Leon Ma guys, uh, meeting him just basically, uh, solidified my, my viewpoint on that whole thing. Um, he's a great dude, man. I think he just shouldn't have went public with something. People make mistakes. Um, and he was just a fantastic guy to meet. I picked up a knife from him and who, uh, it might be one of my, it's, it is, it's one of my favorites and it happened real quick. Um, so I'll talk about that in a second. Um, Greg Medford was there. We got a couple of Greg Medford speeches about America. Um, and I had a Medford rust in my pocket while we were there cause I had it in my back pocket and, um, 
I guess I was sweating or I also had like cold wet beers in my hands and I was reaching for it when people asked and the little pocket um the little pocket right here started getting rust spots in it and I had that issue with this knife when I first got it um it was actually the other one my blue one that had the rust spots at the show this one rusted when I first got it like the second day I carried it to my parents house and um and I was outside, it was hot, and I guess I was sweating, I don't know, and all of a sudden, there was like a couple of rust spots here, here, and then like up in the fuller, and all I did was take some EDCI, spray it in there, and then use like a wire brush, rub it out, and it came right out, and then I put EDCI on it, it never came back, um, so it's not like a big deal, but I find it funny that their uh, S35VN uh, would rust like that. It almost makes me think this is actually D2. Um, but it could have just been, I don't know. But that's both because this one's tumbled and the other one's satin. Anyway, so we were there and that happened. <laughs> I was taking it out to show people and Knife Dude's like, dude, you got rust on here. I was like, oh crap. And then I kept, I made a joke blaming it on my ass juice. <laughs> Probably was ass sweat to be honest. I'm not going to lie. It was in my back pocket with like stickers and other shit we walked like miles. I shouldn't have worn jeans that they were pretty tight jeans too. Um, so I think that's what it is. And then, so I did trade that knife. So if you're watching Tom, uh, the angry Kickapoogee and traded me for that knife, I'm getting his Spartan Harzy folder and an Atom. Don't worry. Um, I ended up stopping by the Flitz booth and I picked up this thing of Flitz polish and dude, Fuck me running. See, there's that, there's that fuse again. Hang on, guys. All right, sorry about that. I uh, had the breaker go out, and I have talked to my contractor. He's working on uh, replacing some windows downstairs, and I went over it with him, and we have a plan. So we're going to run an, uh, another circuit or whatever up, and we'll have 20 amps for one of the air conditioners, and it'll be good, okay? Um, for now, I just ran an extension cord, and hopefully will survive this video. Anyway, I got this Flitz polish, okay? I stopped by their booth, they're really cool as well. Grab this little thing and the guy's like, just put a little, he's like, less is more, just put a little dot on and rub it in, like kind of like make it look like a, a fogged out mirror on, on your uh, blade. And I did that, put it in the fuller, I put it around the blade and then I, I um, used a toothbrush and I just rubbed it in. Um, and then I used a, just like a, uh, cloth, you know, one of the ones that comes with a knife and just rubbed it in and bang, dude, it came out. It looks better than factory. Um, so don't worry, Tom, you're going to get a fantastic looking knife. I'll get it for you. And of course I put some EDCI on it. So you're not going to have that issue again. And I'm not going to lie. Like it, it came out of my pocket, like with wet like wet streaks on it like it was wet you know what i'm saying it wasn't like it just got a little bit of moisture it was soaking like basically so i don't really want to blame the steel but take a look at this guys this is the uh the fuller on the other side and i did it on both sides and the blade look at that fuller right there guys it is as fresh as can be no issues whatsoever um and I think the hand set or the hand set and the satin looks even better now. I'm actually super jealous. Uh, I told him I wanted to swap the blades on these knives because I have another one um, and keep the satin. But um, I'm not going to do that. It's too much work. I don't have a spanner bit. But this thing looks dope. So don't worry, dude. It's all good. And, um, you know, I put some EDCI on there. Should be good to go for a long time. Um, and you can always get some flitz polish and uh, clean it up if you have to. Uh, it is a bit disappointing to have that happen to both of my uh, Slim Middies because they're both S35EN. That's supposed to be a pretty stainless steel. Um, and I asked them and they said it was like, it could happen. You just got to keep your stuff clean and you can uh, clean it off. And I was like, okay. Um, so anyway. That was the Medford thing that happened. Um, they also released a new knife there that's pretty cool based on uh, General Patton. 
Uh, Medford did a whole spiel on it. It's actually a pretty cool flipper. It's 500 bucks though with aluminum scales and S35EN, but it's probably the, the most normal, just like flipper that Medford's ever made or folder that they've ever made. Uh, I'm actually pretty interested in it. It has a reversible clip. I may try to get one of those one day. Uh, I got to run into Lindsay from Medford. She's really cool. I worked with her before when I was ordering that Slim Midi. Um, trying to think of who else we ran into. Um, we ran into the Knife Joker, Travis. Great dude. Um, he gave Knife Dude two uh, Riot K2s exclusives for Knife Joker. And he's going to have those in the Black Widow Pass Around group. So you'll see those knives. Uh, he has a, a, a stock of them available. So if anybody's interested in a Riot K2, go check out the Knife Joker. Uh, Travis is a fantastic dude. I'm really glad I got to meet him. And uh, he didn't know us from Adam when we walked up to his booth. And we left with $800 worth of knives. So, like, this guy is... You know, he put his faith in us. He did watch our, our video that night that Kyle and I did. So, and he commented, which was cool. I really like Travis. Uh, we stopped by the uh, Fanatic Edge booth. And uh, I can't remember the guy's name. I'm so sorry. He is an awesome dude. He was there with his wife, I believe. Uh, he had some of the most amazing mod work I've seen on knives. His Chavez knives. He had a whole slew of them. And if I hadn't have spent a fortune already, I would have bought one, honestly, even though I'm kind of over the Chavez knives from the just the bulky, sharp corner type part of it. I love the designs. I love the skull clip. And his work is phenomenal, guys. Uh, you should definitely check out Fanatic Edge. I don't know why I'm telling you to check out shit you already know. Um, sure, I'm missing a bunch. Russell from Artisan was awesome. Swags was there in the booth. I missed her, but uh, she was there apparently. Um, uh, what else? I saw Israel from uh, Arcane Design and picked up my new crawler. Uh, he is such a cool dude. Um, just absolutely uh, stoked to have met him. And uh, Vero, Joseph Vero from Vero Engineering was there, I believe with his wife Michelle. That was cool. We got to handle the Neuron which is the little double detent knife. And guys, I hate double detent knives. Uh, I've said that multiple times. And I might get one of these because it has a, it's a little mini axon, right? So you can flick it. So I've never seen a double detent knife that you could flick. Um, because the thing I hate about double detent knives is you sit there with the flipper and you end up playing this game. Like how long can I open and close it without messing up right and i have ocd so i just sit there and do that and it's annoying it's not fun but this was like flick and then close flick and then close my only concern would be when it's open how well does it work because it when i was holding it it seemed like you could easily close it on yourself it, it didn't really lock in um but we'll see how that goes it was a cool knife um uh, didn't get to check out the mini synapse sadly uh, it wasn't there. He doesn't have any. But he did tell me the lefty axons are close. Uh, we should be hearing about that soon. He's deciding on whether to do a pre-order or just sell them. Just do a drop because it's lefties. There's probably not going to be as many people uh, trying to get theirs. I think he has 400 of them, which should be a good amount for lefties. I'm stoked on that. Um, what else, man? It was just so fun. Um, I could keep going and going i'm sure i missed some stuff brian brown got to meet brian brown that was awesome he's a cool dude uh we met screaming pirate edc brad we met um old man bob poncho was there he's a really cool old man um if you guys don't follow him on instagram um he had a tough time getting around the show because he's so old um he had like a cane and shit and it was you know i don't i don't want to talk shit but um, the old man had a little trouble and, uh, but he was so much fun to chat with a really cool guy. Uh, trying to think, man, it was just awesome. Uh, Keenison was there. Um, I ran into Eric from, uh, Eric Lesser from Spyderco. I'm not a Spyderco fanboy, but he walked by me in the pit and I was like, Hey Eric. And he looked at me, he's like, Hey man. And I was like, yeah, dude. And then I shook his hand and um, and it's true, guys. He looks like a hobo in person. <laughs> uh, we saw Kurt from Blade HQ like a million times. He stayed in our hotel. So did Greg Medford. 
Um, so Kyle had a couple cigarettes outside. And he would run into people, and he'd be like, I talked to Greg Redford. And I'm like, yeah, buddy. Um, so it was just a blast, guys. Uh, I, I could probably keep going and going. Uh, we got to see a lot of viewers. Um, I really enjoyed meeting Rodney Pearson and Ryan Pearson, who is actually a custom maker. Um, I have a tomahawk he made custom for me. Absolutely love it. And I didn't recognize them because I don't know what they look like. And Rodney walked up to Kyle, and I didn't know who it was. We had just gotten there. It was so loud. And he has this, like, southern accent. He's kind of quiet. And I was like, ah, oh, yeah, what's, hey, what's going on? I'm like, who is this? I, I didn't know. And then Ryan walked up, and he's, like, starting to walk up. I'm like, oh, shit, is he going to come at me? And he's like, hey, man. He's like, I, I, he's like, I sold you a hawk. And I'm like, you sold me a hawk? Hawk? What's it? I was like, an hawk? I was like, oh, okay. He's like, I'm Ryan Pearson. I sold you a hawk. And I was like, a hawk, a tomahawk. I was like, ah, fuck. In the middle of the blade show, I go, ah, oh, fuck. I'm like, yeah, duh. And I felt so terrible that I didn't, like, catch that early. It was just so loud, and I'm, I don't hear well. Uh, but, dude, it was so great meeting them. Met Shane Gables. Met Christopher Tanks. Uh, EDC Misfit. Um, man, we met a lot of people. If I missed you, I'm so sorry. Um, ran into this dude and I'm standing at the Demco booth and he looks over and he goes, you're on TV. And I look back, I'm like, oh. I was like, I'm on TV. He's like, you're on TV. I'm like, I'm not on TV, dude. I was like, I'm on YouTube. I'm for sure not on TV. And he was like, you're on TV. And I was like, I was like, all right, man, thank you. I appreciate you watching. I gave him a sticker and I was like, Kyle, give this man a sticker. He's like, you're on TV too. <laughs> I just thought it was funny because I don't, I don't think of it as TV, right? Um, that was fun. Uh, it was just a blast. I could just keep rambling. I'm so sorry, guys. You want to see some knives? All right. Let me show you some knives. I'm thinking I should go down to the desktop to show you the knives, right? Makes the most sense. So I'm going to flip my one over and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up. Absolutely had a blast. Right, guys. Guys. So let's show you what I got. So I didn't get a ton. Um... I told you I got the Flitz polish. That stuff's awesome. I picked up a bottle of EDCI. I got the small bottle. I gave it to Kyle because he needed some. And I still have this bottle right here. As you can tell, I use it a lot, guys. I am not afraid to use this stuff. Absolutely loved it. Let's start off with TRM. So I swung by the TRM booth with the knife dude. I also swung by with Casey. And uh, Marianne Halpern was as advertised guys amazing woman uh really fun to talk to i got to give her my experiences uh with the shadow that i had that they were great gracious enough to send me uh, a little bit early or send me one of the first ones um and yes yeah, she gave me this cool titanium bottle opener thing uh, it has a little hex bit thing as well that's pretty cool um i think it's called the chupa chupa capra butt i don't know pretty cool and then, obviously, guys, I did not expect to buy a TRM. I literally was talking to Justin and Casey when they were, you know, I want to go see uh, TRM. And I was like, yeah, I love TRM. I love the company. But I, uh, none of their knives have really resonated with me. And that's just a personal thing. I'm not a heavy user. I'm not a guy who uh, uses his knife all the time. I'm, I'm a fidgeter first, really. Uh, I'll be honest, I always am. Um, I do use my knives, packages, uh, cutting labels out. Uh, whenever I need it, I use it. But, like, I'm not constantly using it. So, like, people who really appreciate these super thin blades and that kind of stuff, it, I don't know, the, the, the form over function thing kind of was my problem with these, right? As much as I love USA Made, I love the price point, all that stuff, it just never resonated. I had a Neutron One. Um, yeah, anyway, I'm just going to uh, I'm gonna shut up and go through these because I'm going to do first impressions, so I probably should just shut up. This is a Neutron Two. Um, it is in this absolutely sexy tech wood. Um, this is why I bought it. I was sitting there talking to Marianne, fidgeting with this knife, and I just was like, I actually have to own this. Um, I never really got along with the Atom. It's just a little goofy because the size and everything uh, for how thin it is. And I just love the size of the Neutron. I had one before and really liked it. 
but it just kept cutting me because I would close it like this and then get my thumb right here because I'd be playing with it drunk. Um, but that was, you know, early in my collecting days and now I can spidey flick a lot better. I never really used to do it and it's like perfect on this knife. I used to always do the thumb flick, which is okay, but you don't have that much access for a lefty. So it's just a much better spidey flick and it uh, it's just fantastic, guys. The action's good. Um, and just look at that emerald tech wood. I don't know what they call it. Uh, I'm calling it emerald, but if you can't see the pattern on there and it's this wood composite, it just feels so soft. It's so good, guys. Um, so that is the TRM Neutron. Uh, then I talked about talking to Liang Ma, um, had an absolute blast talking to him. And when I first got to the blade show, I was looking at Kyle's knives and I said, I really want to check out the field duty because he has the one with the marbled or shred carbon fiber, just like this with the bolster lock. And the one I had reviewed was full titanium, which for a lefty makes a big difference because you have a lock bar going all the way down here. So I had to hold it all the way down here to get it to flick reliably without the lock bar pressure issues. Um, but because of this bolster lock, this thing is absolutely perfect. It might as well be left-handed other than, you know, the way you disengage it. It just lines up perfectly. I mean, I can ride it all the way up. There's never going to be a time that I'm riding it up here trying to flick it open, you know? Um, so it's just perfect and it makes these awesome sounds. Listen to this. You hear that ting every once in a while? Oh, absolutely fantastic. This has quickly become a top five knife for me. Uh, maybe even top three kicking stuff way out of there. Um, I will say the clip was normally on this side. It is reversible. So like I said, it might as well be lefty. But when you reverse it, this will be over here sort of. And I just really just pushed on it and it bent right over and straightened out. Nothing went wrong. Like it worked. It works perfectly fine. So you can just bend the clip over if you're left handed. Um, yeah, this is a fantastic offering from Leong Ma. So that is the field duty I picked up. Uh, and again, he's just a great dude. Um, then I picked up the AD 20.5. So I actually got two of these. I have another one right here. I'm not even going to grab it because it's the same one. Um, I got that one for my buddy Chris over at Grady's Gear. Um, this is an interesting one, guys. It's 150 bucks. I also bought a t-shirt, so it was 170 Oh, that TRM was 200 because it was a two-dot. Uh, which means it's a factory second and that's because of There's like this little line right there. I don't know if you can see it. You see that little mark right there That's the reason why this was uh, $200 with the scales these tech wood scales pretty sure it would be like close to 280 or 300 with that But I could be wrong. Um, so I paid 200 for that um, This is a $450 knife right here um and this is $150, comes in this, and then also a shark's foot. You guys have probably seen it before. It comes with a lefty clip, which is awesome. Really stoked about that. I love the smaller size. Um, I really wanted to get the custom version of this or the MG version. He had a couple with them, but I couldn't get a hold of John in time to have him like hold me one or see. I asked him if he could, I never got a response, but I mean, I know they're busy, so. I'm not holding it against them as much as I want to. <laughs> uh, but this thing's pretty cool. Aus 10A. The Grivery does feel good, guys. As much as I hate to say that, like I hate Grivery, um, it does feel pretty good, actually. It doesn't feel super cheap. Um, it even has like the wampum stuff around the pivot design. It's pretty cool. The Shark Lock, I got to say, guys, it works as well as the MG did that I had. Um, I don't notice any difference in quality in terms of that lock. So that is awesome. Um, and then Aus 10A, I mean, it's okay. I mean, it's not my favorite, but they gave us an explanation for it. It's the best steel they can get that they can cut out. 
Um, if they use something better, they would have to water jet it or laser cut it, and that costs a lot more money, and then it wouldn't be 150 bucks, and nobody's spending $200 for grivery. So I, I get it, um, and I like it, actually. I like it a lot. I can flick it much better than I can the full size. Um, yeah, that's a really, really cool offering, and I'm glad I picked one up. I originally didn't. Uh, we went to the booth, and we bought the ones for other people. So Kyle bought a shark's foot for a viewer, and or not a viewer, for um, CJ from um, Miller Blade Works, I think it is. He makes the chef's knives. Awesome, dude. Um, and then I bought the clip point for Chris. And we were at the hotel that night, and we did a video, and we were talking about them, and we were like, shit, we each got to get one. So we went back, and luckily they had more the next day. I got a numbered one, 94 of 100. Chris's is, I think, 64, and Kyle sadly didn't get a numbered one, but honestly doesn't care. I would have traded a mine. I mean, I, it's about the knife, not the... I guess if you resell it, I don't know. Not a big deal. That's the Demco 8020.5. Then I stopped at the uh, Arcane Design booth and picked up my crawler. I pre-ordered this guy. Um, this is the Satin... And I got these plain tie pivot collars. He installed them for me ahead of time and had it ready there. Um, this satin is absolutely sexy. And I've been using that Flitz polish, just like a light. I had it on the cloth and I was just rubbing blades down. And I think it really cleans blades up, even if they're brand new. Like, I don't know. I think you could probably do a hand rub if you used enough of that and like spent the time. But anyway, um... I think it looks sexy with the satin and the black and the touch of gray. So I went ahead and sold the black one, the all black one with the, uh, no, it's gray handle, black blade, and black pivot collar. I sold that uh, just because I spent a lot of money at blade and I need to recoup some and having doubles of things just, I can't be doing that. Um, so I decided to keep the satin. I need to put some bearings in here and then it'll be a uh, rock solid. Uh, Israel was a fantastic dude to talk to. I had a beer with him uh, in the pit Saturday night. He was there, and uh, we chatted a little bit. Um, and, yeah, just a cool dude and a cool knife. And uh, if you guys don't know, the pre-order for the Necronaut version 2 is up right now. Um, that's the Tanto knife, and it has thumb studs now, coffin-shaped thumb studs that are basically made to reverse flick. Um, it looks really cool, um, and I am thinking about getting one. I just don't know. The Tanto, personally, I had one, and it, I don't know. That Tanto just doesn't speak to me as much as this Warney does. I uh, absolutely love this Warney. Uh, so, anyway, keep an eye out on that. If you guys want one, go sign up for the pre-order. Uh, I love to just support uh, guys like Israel. So, it was great meeting him. Then I ran into uh, BJ Hill. So uh, BJ Hill is a knife modder. And this knife you may recognize is the Ferrum Forge Stinger. So my buddy Jake, Bearded Gear. Uh, wish he could have made it this year, guys. Um, he gifted me this knife for Valentine's Day. Uh, I sent him a bit driver that kind of sucked. And he sent me this. So I won that battle. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but I never carried it. So I got these custom scales from Cerberus for it, right? Um, which, you know, I think they really make this knife look 10 times better than those just green G10 um, scales did. I still have the green G10 backspacer in there. Uh, but I never carried it because the detent. Um, yeah, everybody just says you can flick it. You can flick it. And I'm like, yeah, I can. I can flick it great. Detent's great for that. But the flipper was just so weak that it, it bothered me. I would carry it, and I wouldn't want to carry it in my front left pocket because it might open up. Um, and when I fidget with it, occasionally I want to use the flipper if I have one, and I would, you know, it would just flop out to here. It just sucked. And it just didn't get carried. So I sent it to BJ Hill. And uh, he removed the flipper tab. So we did a flipper delete. Look at that. He does such good work, guys. If you ever need a knife modded, I cannot recommend BJ Moore, to be honest. Um, 
yeah, he removed that, and then he did uh, heat anno or, or just anno the hardware, so it's all bronze. It looks absolutely stunning. And then he put his uh, edge on it, which is also fantastic. Uh, he's a KME magician. This thing is so damn sharp. He said Nitro V really, really sharpened up nice. He was impressed with it. Um, so that is my Stinger. Now I'm going to carry this thing because it's freaking got fantastic action. Um, it's flickable, has a great choil. You don't have a flipper tab in your way. I mean, dude, this knife was made to not have a flipper tab. Look at that. So if anybody's looking to get that done, hit up BJ Hill. Uh, it's not that expensive, guys. You'd be surprised. It would probably be like 65 bucks to do all that. I think I spent 40 or 45 because I he didn't have to ship it, uh, and I picked it up in person. Um, so, like, you know, that's a lot of work for that money, and it totally just rejuvenates this knife for me. So now I'm going to carry it, which is cool because my buddy got me this knife. So I got a lot of sentimentality in this one now. That's the stinger. And then, guys, last... But not least, I think, is the Hoback Sumo. Guys, this was... I'm so glad I picked this up at Blade Show. Um, this is the last one available because I kept changing my mind. Uh, we got there the first day, ran into Casey, and it was really early on that day. And he took us over to the Hoback booth. And I really want to give a shout-out to Bill. I don't know if Bill is related to Jake or if he's just you know, part of the team there at Hoback, but, uh, Bill, you are the man. I absolutely love you, dude. I really appreciate your help. Um, he was showing me the sumo and talking to me about it. And I was like, man, I really want one of these, but they had three models. They had this one, which is awesome. Look at that plain tie finish. Uh, I don't know what that is, a bead blast finish or whatever. And then that blue anno on there. Holy cow, it's just absolutely sexy. And then you have that satin blade, um, and then those pockets are uh, bead blasts. It's just absolutely stunning. Um, but then they had one similar to this, but with purple accents. Or no, it was like a, a PVD coating with purple accents uh, and a satin blade as well. Uh, if you want to see that, you can look it up, or uh, Triple E EDC did a video on that. Uh, that's where I first really saw this knife. So shout out to Triple E. Um, and then there is a, like, kind of like, I don't even know what color it was. I think it was a little darker than this. And then it had gold accents uh, or goldy bronze, like a dark gold, and then a stone wash blade. I just couldn't decide which one. Um, so, and we had just gotten there. So I was like, man, I don't want to just spend 550 bucks and then see something I really want for like a $1,000 and not be able to get it. So I, I, I held off and we walked around the show and I came back again and then they had three left, <laughs> but they still had like all three kinds. So I, I don't know, it was just hard to pick. And um, and I was like, you know, maybe, maybe it'll get sorted out by the time I come back if I decide to get it. And then we went through the rest of the show and we were standing there at the artisan booth, basically at the end and uh, I think that's when Kyle met Swags, and I just wandered off. I was like, I gotta go get that Hoback, and I walked all the way across the show, up to the Hoback booth, and I like just eyed up Bill as I walked by. I was just eyeing him up. I was like, you still got that? And um, and I was like, is that still available? And he's like, yeah, last one. It's still here. And I was like, I'll take it. Um, and luckily, I got the last one, and. Um, it was chosen for me because this was the only style available. And I honestly think this is the one I wanted, uh, because it's the blue with plain tie blues, my color, it's a little darker than my color, but, um, I love a satin blade and I love purple, but like if it, it would have worn off on me, um, you know what I mean? I would have eventually just felt like it was more novelty and the gold was cool, but I really wanted satin. So like. I don't know if this blade had been on that one, I may have gone with it. But anyway, I absolutely love this knife. Uh, there's one caveat to this knife, and I'll probably do something about it. Maybe Jake Hoback will do something about it uh, if he's watching, and I'll do a video on it. But this clip, um, the end of this clip, this point right here is just terrible. Um, I, I, I will not lie to you guys, this knife got me home. 
Um, I spent probably eight of the 13 hours of that trip just flicking the shit out of this thing. Um, it is so fidgety. It is incredible. So you have these fullers on each side so you can middle finger flick. Then you have thumb studs. If you want to flick that, you can flick the stud too, but you can thumb flick with the stud. Um, you can thumb flick with that, but it's not great, but you can slow roll it with that. Um, then you have a flipper tab right there. It's this weird little flipper tab. It's not a great flipper tab, but just to have the option and it being there, I get it. And I love it because you just give it a little wrist and you flick it out um, and you have another option. You know what I mean? And because of the button lock system and the super smooth bearings, guess to be bearings, um, you know, a little bit of just popping that blade out a little bit and giving it a little wrist, it's going to lock up every time. Um, it doesn't have the strongest detent, but it's good. Um, you can see it come out there. Um, I have no issues with that. Guys, a middle, middle finger flickable button lock. Like, not thumb studs that you got to kind of figure out. No, this has slots. This has a fuller. I mean, guys... This thing is so damn fidgety, and then you switch, you know, because then I was, like, in the car, and I'm like, ah, my middle finger's getting sore. All right, let me just start banging out with the uh, thumb stud, right? Let me go back to that. Ah, uh, let me hit the flipper tab. Oh, no, let's just go full button lock, right? Let's do the button lock dance, right? Uh, guys, this thing is a friggin' home run. You just got to take care of that. Um, Left-handed, it's not a big deal. That's why I love this knife, guys. It's almost like made for lefties. Um, if I hold it, see that point? It's just not digging in, guys. It's not getting me at all because of where the clip is located. Now, if I hold it like this, yeah, I feel it a little bit right there. Um, but it's not bad. And then you have that flat you could choke up on. Um, again, I'll do, a, I'll do a video on this knife, so I don't want to go too far. But he needs to do something about that. Um, you know, I implore you to just round that off or just, you know, yeah, just get rid of this corner, you know, just cut it off here maybe and round it or point it down. I don't know what you could do. But you got to do something because um, that's really the only issue with this knife. If you're right handed, if you squeeze it all, you feel it. I mean, it literally is bad. You can see a point in the middle of my hand. I mean, it's just not good. Um, but for lefties, it's fine. So that's why I like it a lot. Um, and he did sell out of them there, and he's selling out of them online. So they're selling, but uh, that's going to be a great point by pretty much everybody. So I just want to point that out. Uh, maybe there'll be an aftermarket clip, or maybe he'll make a clip, or I'll have, I'll see if BJ Hill can do something about it. Uh, but it's definitely something to consider. Other than that, again, this knife is an absolute home run. Um, so that was all the knives I picked up at Blade Show. Um, one other thing I want to note is I got to eat a little crow here. Uh, my wife, when I got home, I showed her this knife first cause I was excited. It was in my pocket and this morning anyway, uh, cause I got home late and she looks at it and she's like, okay. And I'm like, she's like, oh, it's a button one. So she's like trying to do the auto cause she has the donut knife. And I'm like, no, it's a button lock knife. I'll show you. And then she opens it. And then I'm like, yeah, you push the button to close it. And, you know, she did this, right? Um, and she goes, oh, you, know, you can just do this. And she starts going like this. She's like, oh, that's fun. And so I got to eat a little crow here, guys. The button lock elementum for beginners might actually be a good knife. Um, I have shit on that knife a lot. But it now makes a little more sense coming from that perspective because my wife was just like oh yeah that's cool and i was like yeah but you can use these thumb studs and i was like you can use the the flipper and you can use the fuller to do this cool stuff and she's like no nah, like this is cool and she started doing this and i'm like no uh so anyway gotta eat a little crow there um so that is all the stuff i picked up uh one last thing i want to talk about is jack wolf knives guys um i brought this up at uh on the edge live stream uh benny from jack wolf knives is just an absolutely fantastic dude um this jack sack came with a microfiber cloth 
and these stickers and an airhead which is cool uh, check out this cloth really nice actually um and these are going to be coming out third fourth quarter i think he said and they're going to be 275 and they're just really cool slip joints uh check out jack wolf knives i'm sure online uh casey from knives fast did a vlog video which congrats dude that knife or that video is killing it um and he talked to benny from jack wolf knives he has artwork that's going to be incorporated into the um the packaging and you get these cards with it and uh the artwork is done by a guy who has done work for marvel um uh, they're going to be collectible they're made by riot they're i i don't like slip joints guys but these were fantastic and i know i'm getting one uh, this guy has spared no expense uh, so I really want to support Benny from Jack Wolf Knives. Um, I want to uh, just spread the word. Anybody who's into slip joints, uh, people who aren't, that's what he's going for. He wants to show that you can make a good slip joint with modern materials and have the best of both worlds. So he wants people like me who aren't into slip joints to see the value of them. And, and I did. Standing there playing with them and, and handling them and listening to him. Uh, it was awesome, guys. Uh, I think he's going to take off. I think he's going to have a huge success on his hands. And uh, I'm just really happy that I got to meet Benny there. We're going to have him on the live stream at some point. Uh, so, guys, check out Jack Wolf Knives. All right. Uh, I'm going to close this up uh, with the face cam just real quick. And then um, I'll let you guys go. Sorry for the long video. All right, guys, so that was my experiences and uh, my uh, haul from Blade Show. Uh, it was absolutely a blast. Uh, sorry for the long video, but that's just how, I, how it goes, right? Um, yeah, I just absolutely had the best time. Uh, I'm so glad I did it. Uh, if you guys are planning to go next year, if you want to know if it's worth going, guys, it really is. Even in a year like this where it was kind of muted because a lot of companies couldn't make it from overseas or Europe. Those are overseas too, obviously. <laughs> um, or small makers couldn't make it probably because they took a hit this year maybe uh, with COVID and everything. I don't know, but I think next year is going to be popping even more so. And I had a blast this year. So if I can make it next year, I will. Uh, we're going to try to maybe make a family trip of it and uh see how we can plan that out um and see if we get the families together because hanging out with kyle was awesome but we did miss our families so it'd be cool to kind of incorporate both um and yeah guys uh, just absolute blast i appreciate you watching i love you guys so much uh and i hope you have a fantastic day i will catch you later